Hey you guys, how are you guys doing? Girl, this is a random chit chat. Mm. Um, girl, my skin is glossing because I just uh, did my skin regimen. You guys, I have a separate video on what I use, but today I use the Bior Charcoal Face Wash. I always use toner about good molecules or, or witch hazel i like to use the ordinary lactic acid i use five percent i know that's not really zooming in can y'all see that the ordinary and then i also use by good molecules good molecules their hyaluronic acid serum and then i serve moisturizer and that is it look and <laughs> I was telling another, I don't know what it is lately, around the apartment complex, at least three or four people have been like, I hate that you're moving because you have such, one, one young woman stopped me and she's like, you know, I just wanna tell you, I see you walking around with your son and you have such great energy. I said, oh, thank you. I said, I have to watch it because as I'm getting older and moving into my 40s, I could be a little snippy. And she looked at me, she's like, 40s? She said, no way, no way. She's a white girl. <laughs> I said, yes, honey, I'm 41. She's like, you look really good. I said, you know what that is, darling? That's called minding my business and a good skin regimen. And she started laughing. So yeah, you guys, you know, I, and this is what I always tell people, I, and y'all know this, I'm a very optimistic person. I treat everybody the same. And I believe in the energy that you put out in the, in, the energy that you put out in the universe is what you receive back. So I always try to be that, not this is not overly happy-go-lucky, but more positive. I smile when I see people. I know a lot of women nowadays, I don't know what it is. A lot of women and young ladies, they don't even smile at all. They don't smile at men because they don't want men talking. I smile at everyone, girl, but girl, I told y'all at the dispensary, the security officer, is um where is he from and we'll get into the chit chat well this is part of chit chat let me do my intro y'all know how we do this we talk about what's going on in my personal life what i'm watching on youtube and what i'm watching on tv so girl i go to the dispensary and so the security officer is from where is he from it's from the islands the virgin islands right and i smile and say hi and so this previous time i went for a change, I had on a little bit of makeup. I had a nice dress because what was going on? There was something going on here. They were having a happy hour later on here. So I just wanted to go ahead and get done up just a little bit, not super glam. So I, when I came out the dispensary, I noticed him at some type of vendor. Some guy was selling hot, dog in the par hot dogs in the parking lot there. And he's like, hey love, how you doing? I said, oh, hi, how are you? I didn't see you at the front. He said, yeah. He said, look. When you, he said, he said, I just want to let you know, whenever you go, you, if you get a divorce, I'm here, I cook, I clean. I said, hold on, hold on. Why are you putting that? He said, yeah, my man here, when you got out the car, he was like, damn. I said, what at me? Y'all, I know I'm a good looking woman, but I, whatever. So he said that the other man, when they saw me get out the car, he was like, damn, who is that? She is beautiful. I said, oh, y'all are sweet. Yeah, okay, bye. I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't be smiling so much, but I smile and I say hi to people because I just think that that's a friendly person. But he was so funny. He said, what did he say? He said, I could tell I knew you were married the first time I, he said, most women that are this happy and smiling and they're typically already taken. I said, okay, <laughs> whatever you say. Anyway, y'all, so what else is going on? Um... We're still in an apartment, clearly, and we were more than likely be in these apartments for a while. We signed our lease until March of next year to give us time to look for a house. We had to get a new real estate agent, baby, because that other real estate agent we had, she was just too busy. She was a nice woman, but I could tell that she, well, we could tell that she was preoccupied with other things, which we were like, no. So we have another real estate agent. She is perfect. So far, so good. Um... And so she's sitting us, you know, houses to look at every day. Well, not every day. I would say every two or three days. And so 
still that houses in Texas. The good thing about the houses in Texas is that they are selling for what is going on with my sorry y'all i had to adjust my camera anyway so yeah the house searching has been going okay we've only had this real estate agent for a week um but baby look one of the houses that she sent us when i did a search a website came up that said dieinthehouse.com now in the state of texas I believe the real estate agent does not have to reveal if someone died in a house. So I was like, what the hell is this? So then it had, it had notes in the description that said, meth, fire, died. I was like, ooh. So <laughs> my husband asked the real estate agent and she went back and asked the other real estate agent for the seller. And they were like, we don't have any history of someone dying. So would y'all be okay with buying or living in a house where you know someone had died in i don't think i could do it the way our energy is set up we can feel just about everything or i don't think we could do that girl mm -mm. so yeah everything's going good um besides that girl these kids i know there's been like talk on social media I and mean, in the news about how social media influences this generation and i mean from jb's age up to my niece's age who's 22 how it ha has how it has had a negative impact on children i'm gonna say this i don't think it's necessarily social media but at the end of the day it falls to the parents monitoring their children on these platforms because I monitor what JB does all the time. I, when he wants to load up something, I look at it. You know, whatever he's looking at, I look at it. His little raggedy, okay. His little friends out here, I've catch caught them slipping up and cursing in front of me. They would do it in front of me. Like the disrespect. If you want to curse at home on the playground, do it, but don't do that in front of me. And I was like, and I check them and I let their parents know I check your kid. And they're like, oh, thank you. Well, you got every right to do it. I said, yes. Because if they're around me and if they're acting like that, I'm going to check your babies. Because you can't do it, y'all. And I know what it is. JB told me before that they watch a lot of TikTok that has cursing. Um, and so he's like, mommy, I think that once so-and-so, I'm not going to give any names. Once so-and-so, so-and-so leaves, the other kids will go back to their normal selves and they won't be cursing. I said, JB, thank God, you guys, that I pray for my child and he has a great head on his soldier. soldier. He has a great head on his shoulders to where he knows that's not right. And he doesn't feel pressure to act like them you know what i mean so jay is doing good in school um he's doing better he was kind of struggling with math he's getting a lot better better i haven't started doing additional work at home because i've just been so busy with work and house hunting and all that so yeah y'all that's what's going on at home um, I've been on my health care kick again, working out more. You guys, make sure you get your immune system up and popping. If you haven't already, I ordered some liquid zinc, uh, calcium. I take a, a slew of vitamins every day. But just overall, making sure I'm eating better. I have a green juice here that I made, and I drink that every morning. Um... A little bit too much junk food still, but I'm kind of taming down on that. What I'm watching on YouTube. I've been watching a lot of the concerts. Yeah, I'm checking my time because I got 10 minutes before I have to head this baby out. Um, I've been watching a lot of the Tiny Desk concerts. And I love Tiny Desk. NPR Tiny Desk. Now, I'm going to say this. I've been really digging. Um, give me, leave me alone. And whoever is booking these artists, you need to raise, honey. But I'm going to say this. Y'all know the artist Yabba, Y-E-B-B-A. She used to be Abby. And then her mother, unfortunately, committed suicide. And she changed her name. Um, Abby has an almost sadness about her. Just her incomplete aura. Is, and I'm pretty sure it has to do with her mother passing. But she has an almost sadness about this. And let me, I'm going to say this. Because she... She can sing. There's no denying her talent. But when you compare her, I hate to do, we do this, don't we? We just do this as, as humans. But 
I know of at least 10, 20 gospel in the old school black church that sing like that are better. So I guess what I'm trying to say, if you put her against other black gospel singers, I mean people like in your church or whatever that are like that, she, there's no, there's, there's no competition. There's no competition. You know what I mean? She's, she can hang with them. But if you put her out there in the mainstream and with other artists, it's like, wow, she can do that. And it's so funny when I see other people commenting and they're like, wow, I've never seen someone, I've never heard someone sing like this. I'm like, yeah, this is black. This is, this is black church. We know those of us who grew up in the church, we are familiar with those riffs and runs. I know that um, the Clark sisters, Kim Burrell, are huge inspirations for her. And again, I'm not denying her talent because baby can't sing. I guess what I'm saying is that if you put her with other people that are in that field, she wouldn't stand out. But because she's singing contemporary, you know, in music that she stands out, as she should. I'm just saying that. So I am digging her tiny desk. So baby, I'm back to looking at Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon Ramsay is a mess. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay is a mess, but a part of me feels like a lot of that stuff is scripted, which a lot of reality TV is. Again, again, this is Kitchen Nightmares. I feel like a good part of it is scripted and sure enough i went back and read an article from someone a restaurant owner who was on the show and he said that they thought they would have a lot more time with gordon ramsay outside of the tv screen and it wasn't like that what you saw is what you got they only the only time they had to spend with him and get his expertise was when the camera was on um, not only that, but some of the people who showed up, you know how they do like a open and now they have customers come in. They're saying that some of those people were asked to exaggerate how bad the food was. Girl, but you know, I kind of figured that. What else with us? I'm going to talk about Linda. Linda Lynn, who is another YouTuber, you guys. Um... Um, I am friends with her on Facebook, so I saw her initial post, and I'm the type of person, I don't post a lot on people I know on social media. I will contact you, I will DM you, I will call you. So I immediately called her when I saw this, and she, I didn't get to speak with her, but then I spoke to her in person about two, two or three days ago, and we talked in length about what's going on. Let me tell you something. I let her know. I said, look, you cannot, and she knows this. Linda is a smart woman. Two things. You can't force no man to be a man. You can't. And second, if they want to go, let them go. If someone wants to leave, let them go. Because in order for a relationship, especially a marriage, to work, both of you have to want it. And so, he's awesome. I'm not going to, yeah, just excuse JB. Another thing is that, and I told her, I said, I've been there. You know, my husband and I had a separation. And I will say there was an incident where, um, I think I was over his house because JV was going over. JV was like two and a half, three when this was going on. So I was over at the house and I just grabbed some bananas, right? Within two hours, I heard a knock at the door at the apartments that we used to live in. And it was him. It was my husband. Well, then we weren't married. And I'm like, he had a bunch of groceries. And he was like, I saw you took some bananas. He's like, are you, you guys need food? He's like, if you ever need something, just let me know. I'll, whatever you need. You don't have to steal food. Baby, what do you want? I'm almost done. <clears throat> I guess my point is that even when we, we were not together, he always made sure we were right because I am the mother of his child. You know, we always had an understanding that if anything, he will always provide. We know we look, we were only separated for like not even a year, like eight, nine months. And so we didn't go through any type of child support. He gave me money every two weeks, like no problem. Because if anything, I always knew that my now my husband was always a provider. He all whatever I needed. I don't have to ask for anything. So he always provides no problem because he recognizes my role as the mother of his child, which is all about respect at the end of the day, respecting each other in the roles that we have in a relationship. So I think it's a damn shame that her husband, um, I'm not going to talk. So I think it's unfortunate 
and I am a very, look, when I give people advice, I'm very, like I don't sugarcoat. I told her, I said, you're gonna be okay, but you're gonna go through it. You're gonna go through the ringer, cause they just separated. And it's just real, you're gonna go through it. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be rough. He's gonna be on some bull. And it's gonna be difficult. Family's gonna be giving you advice. Everyone's gonna be giving you their own opinion, including me. Um, you have to do what's best for you and your children. And when this is all said and done, you will come out with a great testimony, baby. It's but it's just unfortunate and I hate that she's having to go through this. That's another YouTuber also that's going through. She actually went through a divorce. Her husband ended up being very, it started off emotional, um, abusive, and then it turned physical. And so, yeah, you guys, you know, pray over London, pray over that situation. So that's all I have to say about this situation. So yeah, it's positive thoughts towards Linda and the entire situation. All right, you guys, what I'm watching on TV, love and marriage, speaking of narcissistic men, girl, Martel, and I don't know if y'all watch this, love and marriage, Huntsville, that one husband, Martel, is the most narcissistic, self-absorbed man I have met in a long time absolutely disgusting look he had a whole baby by another woman while he was married and he still flips things around on Melanie but they're both toxic towards each other they're going I think they're officially divorced though I went back and I'm starting to rewatch the act about uh Gypsy Rose because I just think that story is absolutely crazy you guys Gypsy Rose and her mama crazy mama did y'all know that know if this is true or not they had her her cremated the mom dd Dee Dee, because again gypsy rose and her boyfriend ended up killing the mom and there was rumors that her family flushed her ashes down a toilet that's not funny that is cold wow i forgot to mention this another show <laughs> that i finished was made made is on what was made on you guys made is on Netflix. Um, it stars Andy McDowell, a younger actress, I don't know her name, Ashley something, Anika Rose, who played in um The Princess and the Frog. Um, who else? Who else? Not a lot of, you know, Andy McDowell and Anika are one of the top, you know, uh actresses in the movie a series excuse me it's a limited series i believe and so made hits on and it's called made made hits on several subjects several triggering subjects the main being abuse um abuse it hits on mental illness homelessness um poverty um, social economic, which is poverty, uh, what else, infertility, so it is, it is a lot. I, I would say I would caution and tread lightly if you have gone through those or if you're in a certain headspace where you really can't handle that type of, I would stay away from this, I don't mean to laugh, I would stay away from this series. However, I found it very good. There were certain episodes that were like, uh, girl, my anxiety was like, what the hell is going to happen? Because, you know, a lot of these series, something crazy just happens out of the blue. And you're like, what the hell? But it really wasn't like that. It was very, very well acted, very well scripted. Um, so it overall journeys this young woman who has a child uh and her is he her husband y'all is he just her boyfriend i believe he's just her boyfriend he's abusive and it makes you realize how abuse can come in many forms and i think even in a way her mother was almost abusive to her her mother was played by andy mcdowell i love andy mcdowell um she's such a cute quirky actress and it was funny to see her with her gray hair because she girl she was like quarantine hit we ain't doing no dying but she looks beautiful with her regal gray hair in the front and she has beautiful curly hair y'all know andy mcdowell from groundhog day groundhog day um, but anyway, so this young woman has a child and like I said, her boyfriend is 
verbally abusive he is your typical narcissistic and i know we kind of i feel like narcissism is being thrown around a lot that term is being thrown around um but this the person that plays her husband or boyfriend definitely is but you know oftentimes you hear people say why don't the person leave meaning the victim of the abuse and there was one part spoiler alert there's one part where she goes to a shelter and the shelter owner i love this lady i've never seen her in a movie before i think her first name is bj she's played by an uh an older black woman i say older like 55 60 years old she tells the young woman it takes five times for you to leave five times because she befriends another woman the young woman at the um homeless shelter she's a hispanic girl and she ends up leaving and going back to her husband who choked her i mean just devastating and so you know you see how and andy excuse me the young woman's character ends up doing the same thing going back to her abuser too in the middle of the show um but i guess my point is is that when it comes to emotional abuse manipulation like that it's really hard because when because they're not hitting you 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 don't think you're being abused so her character you, you see her character going through these range of emotions because she's like she's like no i'm not being hit he didn't put his hands on me and he just and he only acts like this when he's drunk you see what i mean so it's behavior that can be controlled if he wasn't drinking almost so um her own father you can see that the, the the history of the abuse because her own mother went through that with her father and she almost has a recollection or, or a, um, a memory uh, of hiding underneath the cabinet as a child and her mom coming in to rescue her with a bloody nose and it, it just shows you how things are passed on and behaviors in families are passed on because we learn, we model the behavior that we see from our parents honestly we do and it, it's sad to know that and to see that happen but thankfully you know she was able to break free and break that cycle of abuse so check it out again it's called made I absolutely enjoyed it I loved it um and I can sit here and say you guys I just my heart goes out to any of you who have ever been in situations like that I've known people um ironically i've worked with several women who have been through you know uh, marriages where their husband i remember one time one of my co-workers she told me she's going to be my mom she said vivian my breaking straw was he meaning her husband was holding their baby and he was punching her in the face holding her baby and punching her in the face and i looked at her like oh my god like i just I, I i could not imagine going through something like that and what that does to you and break you down as a woman and as a mother but she said that was the that was the straw for her because she was like if he could do that holding our child and put our child in danger i gotta leave i mean she would tell me crazy stuff like if if he if she did something that he didn't like like I think one time they were out to dinner and he didn't like what she did she said something she made a joke she was laughing he grabbed the the inner thigh her inner thigh and pinched it so hard to stop her from behaving that way she said the next morning her her thighs were purple just purple with it with with him grabbing her he was so basically he would grab her in areas to where when she wears clothes you couldn't see the the abuses so <sighs> that is horrible that is absolute that is, it's giving me chills just thinking about that and that's just lock and key season two is on netflix i'm starting to watch that i'm confused because i don't even remember what the hell happened y'all in season one but that's back on um I did watch because it was Halloween and there was a couple of scary movies on. Yeah, I try not to watch a lot of scary movies when I'm doing this time because I really do feel like the atmosphere is different. But I did catch some of Halloween H2O. Again, I'm the type of person, I look at the good in everyone. So Michael Myers, I don't know if y'all realize this, but he, I 
actually let someone go. <laughs> he's, you know, so he's not the psychopath that we have grown to know. Uh, there was a scene where a mom and her daughter went into a bathroom. So Michael was already in the bathroom. So when the mom was in the bathroom, she looks over and she see Michael with his mask on and he grabs her purse and he just leaves in her van because I guess his little his little car broke down and so he didn't kill her so you know you have to look at the good in everybody that's all i'm saying you know <laughs> y'all know what i'm saying so that's it you guys this is just a real quick um chit chat i do have some hair related videos that are coming up i have a moisturizing deep conditioner where i'm using the eating body works deep conditioner i have the suave review and the blue magic cholesterol hair review coming up excuse me um product review coming up I know BuzzFeed, I'm supposed to do that flexi rod set going on two years. My flexi rods are in the storage unit. So, baby, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I do have like a wash and go style coming up. So that is it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you as always to all of my new subscribers. Take care. Bye.